Howdy guys. All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about importing our data from our JSON file that we um, exported in the last video for multiparm. So I wanna use that data to populate the multiparm. All right, so that way we can exchange the data back and forth between um, our HDAs. All right, so let me actually just uh, clear this out here. And you can see that I've gone ahead and already assigned um, a file here, but what we're going to talk about in this uh, video also is how to add a little bit of UX to make things a little bit more informative for users. So without any sort of path in here, if I hit import data, we're going to get this little window here that says it couldn't find the file. All right, so we're going to cover how to do that. Uh, let me assign the JSON file here and then import the data. And you can see it actually goes and populates the multiparm with all of our uh, settings that we exported out to um, our JSON file. All right, so that is what we're going to do in this video. Let's get started. All right, so let's get started with our import of our multi-parm parameter. So if you remember, uh, in the last video, we went through and exported out all of our multi-parm data to a JSON file. What I want to do now is I want to be able to call that information back and basically populate uh, my multi-parm. Because when I go and drop down this particular node here, um, I believe I have it in here somewhere did I not yeah I didn't actually put it into one of the context menus so when I drop it down it's just gonna show up with its default um, first box right and so what we want to do is we want to be able to import that information back in and then repopulate our multiparm so let's uh, get that going um, it's pretty easy actually let's uh, go a lot editing of contents and then type properties because we need to set up a couple things and then do a little bit of uh, uh, Python scripting in here. So I'm going to go to the parameters and I'm going to uh, drag out a new folder. I'm going to set this to a simple folder and um, I'm just going to call this import just to stick with our naming convention there. And we're going to need two things. We need a um, file because we're going to import a JSON file. So I need to go and find it. So this is going to be our um, import file and we'll call this file to import. There we go. The label. And then we want a button, and this button is going to be what executes the code. So we'll say import uh, data. We'll say import data. Something like that. All right, so now we've got those two guys all set up. Perfect. And before I go and actually um, find the file, I want to get some code hooked up here. So I'm going to jump into my Python module that uh, we already set up in the last video. And I'm going to add a new definition, all right, or function. I'm going to call this import parms, like so. We're going to pass in our quarks as an argument so we can access the parent node. All right, now I also like to start to separate these. Once you start getting uh, more code in here, it's good to put these little separators in here. So we'll just call this import um, multi-parm parameters. And then I also like to put in just a big strip on top just to make it nice and clear. All right, so. Uh, let's get the button hooked up first. So we're just going to say print uh, working, like so. All right, hit apply, and then let's go get that code hooked up to our button, just so we know it's all working. So I'm going to use the who module, and then phd uh, for, or I'm sorry, phm, for um, calling the function on this particular node. You might have seen me actually use um, the who.pwd.hm, right, before. Uh, you can also do HDA module, like so. But I found that there's another one called phm, which is awesome, just makes it nice and short. And then we want to hook it up to this particular function here. So I'm just going to do that. And then paste in the quarks, or type in the quarks, hit apply, and then there we go we're working nice let's make a little space in our python shell here yeah so now our button is all hooked up so just a couple ways to um, get access to the functions that are inside of your hda module all right cool so the next step here is to um, import our modules that we need to use so we're going to do json and os i'm going to use those guys and i'm going to actually make a little bit of space in here just so i can see probably be better for you guys too all right so then i usually go and get the parent node and so i want to do parent is equal to the quarks and we want to get the node and that 
represents the HDA, this particular instance of the HDA, so this guy right here. All right, cool. And then next thing we need to do is get our um, file directory. All right, so we can say parent.parm, and that was our import dir, I believe, is what I called it. Let's go back and check just to make sure. Our import file. There we go. Let's paste that guy there. And we're going to eval this as a string just to make sure. All right, then we need to get the multiparm. All right, so we're going to do multiparm. And I really messed that one up there. And the multiparm is going to be equal to our parent.parm. And that was called boxes. All right, we don't need to eval it as anything. We just need the, the parameter. All right, so with that information, the first thing that we need to do is basically unpack all of our uh, JSON data. So we're going to use the JSON module to do that. And so before we even do that, let's just check to make sure that the length of the uh, file dir, that variable, is greater than zero. All right, because if it's if it's equal to zero, then we don't know we haven't assigned anything to it. And we also want to check to make sure that it is an actual file. All right, so the OS module has the path module which then also has a isFile function inside of it that lets us verify whether it's a file or not. So if we pass both those tests, right? So if we actually have some uh, string data inside of this particular parameter and that string data is actually a file, then we also need to pump in the dir that we want to check or the, the string that we want to check. So if that is actually a file, then we can actually um, do something with it. So we're going to I'm just going to print um, found file, and then we should also do a check, or we should um, put in some alternative option here. So if we fail, we should tell the user that, you know, you don't have any uh, file assigned, or I can't find the file, right? And so the who module has a UI module, which then has a display message function inside of it, and this allows us then to give some information, all right? So... Um, let's say we couldn't uh, find the file, like so. All right, so let's go and test this out now. So I'm going to hit apply, and let's go, because I don't have anything in here, so let's hit import data, and look at that, we couldn't find the file. There we go. So really nice uh, to put in those kind of UX um, options there just to give the user a little bit more information. So if we do find the file, Let's actually leave that print in there. So let's go and find that JSON file. And let's choose that guy and hit import data. Look at that, we found the file. All right, so we're making sure that we actually have the data to work with. Awesome. So the next step in this process, let's declare our data uh, dictionary that's gonna hold all the data that comes from that JSON file. And then basically let's open up the file and get all the data out of that JSON file. So we're gonna do a with open. And we're going to open that file dir. All right, so we're going to pump that in as f. Or sometimes I like to do out file. So let's just do that. All right, and so then we're going to say that data is equal to uh, json.load out file. All right, so let's uh, print that just to make sure that we actually have some data in there. So we're going to print our data variable. Hit apply. And let's go and test this. And look at that. We now have all of that data back inside of Houdini from that JSON file. Very cool. So at this point now, we're ready to then populate our multiparm. Okay, so let's do another check. We're going to say if the length of data is greater than zero, that means we have some data. Because if we don't have any data, might as well just you know exit out of this whole function and not do anything, right? So we're going to then uh, look for all the data inside of our JSON file. So what I want to look for is this blocks array. So it's an array because it has these little brackets here. And inside of that array are a bunch of dictionaries that house a bunch of values that we want to get access into. All right. And so uh, we want to look then, or we want to get those. So I'm going to say blocks. We want to get that array. I'm going to say blocks is equal to data. And we put in, let me move the cursor there. There you go. And we put in the name of that array inside of the JSON file. All right, so if I were to print this right now, we'd get that same, actually, let's do blocks. We get the same result as we did when we printed the data variable. Yeah, cool, so now we have access to each one of those uh, blocks there. So let's loop through 
all that data and populate the multiplier. It's easy as that. So let's do four I in range, and that range is going to be the length of blocks. All right. Cool. So then for each one of those, uh, we want to add a new instance to the multiparm. So when we hit this little button right here, we're just adding a new instance, right? And so we can do that programmatically by using the uh, multiparm. Well, that's the variable. But then we can say insert uh, multiparm instance, and then we want to give it an index. All right, so that way we control the index. Very cool. So that basically right there will will populate our multiparm. So let me hit apply and let's test this out. So if I were to import this now, look at that. I get four new instances, which matches the four instances I have in my JSON file. Very cool. All right, let's clear this out. All right. And actually, let's let's do one thing here really quick, um, because if I were to keep importing this, you can see it's just going to constantly add on to it. Right. What I would, what I really want to do is I want to clear that out. So what we can do is we can say multiparm up here uh, dot what is it dot set yeah sorry <laughs> dot set to zero I just want to set it to zero all right so we just hit apply and now when I import the data you can see it only has four in it and each time I hit that button it only has four very cool all right so at this point now all we need to do is loop through now um, each of the items inside of each of the array elements, right? So currently we have access to blocks and inside of blocks, there's dictionaries. All right. And so I want to get access to each one of the items in here and get the name and the value. Okay. And so there's a really cool way to do this. Uh, we can say for name, uh, comma value in the, uh, blocks, I, so the current um, iteration that we're on, and then items. So we can inspect all the items in this particular iteration of blocks. So currently, if I were to say that we're on iteration one, right, or zero, that means we are going to get this particular dictionary and we're inside of that name variable here, inside of Houdini here. So that name variable and that value, uh, it's going to populate it with the name and the value for us. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, all right, so at that point, all we need to do is say parent.parm, and the parm that we want to access is the name, and we want to set it to the value. Just like that. Easy peasy. All right, let's hit apply and accept, and let's go import our data, and look at that. We are set right back up. How cool is that? All right, so at this point, we want to go save our node and match our current definition. And now we have the ability to export and import our JSON files to work with our multiparms. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know if you have any other requests.